to our third sample, which is going to be Golden Fields. And you can see on our worksheet that we're going to be doing a graded wash, some scratching, some lift out, some salt, spatter, and dry brush. Actually, we're not going to be doing the graded, graded wash exactly. We'll be doing all the rest of those, though. So we're going to start with drawing a pencil line where the land and the sky meet. So this one can go fairly straight. And again, don't use a ruler. Just draw a line across. This is a natural field. It's not mowed, so it doesn't have to be completely straight. Um, we are going to create a tree line above and a golden field below. So I mean, we're working with my large one-inch flat brush. And I'm going to start with just water on the lower portion of my field. So below the pencil line is going to get water. And then while that is wet, I'm going to be working with my eight round brush to grab some yellow ochre and flood that into that field. And it's okay that it's uneven because I wanted to have some variety of color there. And while it's wet, and this is a little different, while it's wet I'm going to work with two greens to create a tree line. And I'm going to start first with my uh, blue-green. I'm holding the brush with my hand over the handle because I want to get kind of a rough texture. And when you, when you lay your brush on the paper and you drag it, the bristles kind of go around the edge and they, they make a real scraggly line, which is really great for creating the illusion of tree texture. I'm also going to grab some of the blue, the yellow green that I've mixed. Again, I just want to create a nice little rough tree line there. And by holding it like this and laying that brush flat on the paper and dragging it, I'm going to get that nice rough line. I would love that to bleed down into the field a little bit more than it is. I like it there where it's bleeding in, so that just added a little bit more. And while that is wet, I'm going to now use um, a pointy handle of one of the brushes. The other one had too rounded of a handle. And I'm going to create some, some, some tree shapes. So you can create just a few little tree lines. You don't have to put them everywhere. Just a few um, to create that look of the trees. And while that's wet still, I'm going to do one more technique, which is to add a little bit of salt. This is ready for salt now. Um, it's not uh, shiny, shiny wet, so I'm going to do a light sprinkling of salt. Again, just like before, reached in with a, my fingers, pinched out a little bit of salt. I'm just kind of rubbing my fingers together to deposit it on the paper. I don't want it clump. You don't want to take a clump and throw it on there. You want to make sure you're just rubbing your fingers together to sprinkle out just a little bit at a time. You don't need much for this one. We don't want as many as with the uh, pines in the snow. We just want a little bit of uh, texture in there. So that's step one for uh, the golden fields. So I'm ready to add the next layer to my golden fields painting. And I'm going to need three different tools for this. First, I need my fan brush. This is going to allow me to do some grasses. Um, I also need my liner brush. It's going to allow me to do some detailed grasses in the foreground. And then I also need a spatter tool. Uh, that I'll be using to create a little bit of spatter texture in the front. Um, you may remember these from level one painting. Uh, this tool is, uh, you put paint on it, this metal post gets inserted into the brush, and then with a turn of the handle, um, you can spatter down onto the paper below and create a little bit of spatter texture. Um, it's really great for all sorts of applications, but in this case, we're just going to give the field a little bit of texture. Uh, I do want to point out that I did apply some salt to my paper um, and it left very little texture. I was really hoping for more than that. Hopefully you got more salt texture in yours. Um, I will let you know that uh, on your evaluation for these paintings, as long as you get salt texture to occur in one of, I think there's three, yeah, there are three areas, three different techniques that uh, require the salt. As long as it works in at least one of them, you're okay. It's nice if it works in all of them, obviously. but. Uh, you won't lose points if you didn't get any salt technique, like mine's very hard to see. So I am going to start first with my fan brush, and I've already prepared on my palette um, 
the burnt umber, which is the darker of the two browns. And I'm going to be applying the, um, the burnt umber on my fan brush. Now, I have not wet this brush. Uh, typically, when you're working with a fan brush, you want the bristles to stay very separated. Um, and that does not happen if you get it wet. They tend to clump together. So you want to use this as a dry brush technique. So I'm actually going to take the brush tips and apply the paint just to the tips of the brush uh, from right from the well because I'm not mixing it with anything. Now, if I was doing a mixed color, um, I would, of course, dab that into the mixed color on the palette. So I've got some of the paint on there, and I hope you can see that it's just on the tips. The tips of the brush are still separated, so that's going to allow me to create some grasses right in the foreground. And you won't get real far because, again, it's a very dry brush, so you have to, you have to reapply. And I don't want this to look like a mowed grass, so I'm going to give kind of crisscrossing some of the branches or the, the blades so that I don't look like I'm trying to uh, create a mowed surface. You know, you can see that the, the wind is kind of blowing these and they're kind of blowing in each direction and they're overlapping. So I have some texture now in the foreground and I want to create a little bit of texture in the middle area. Now, obviously, things get smaller as they get further away from us. We know that through aerial perspective. So I'm going to be making some shorter kind of mid-length over here where maybe you're seeing just the tops of the grass is kind of peeking through. And then in the distance, create just almost like little taps of the brush just to kind of get a feeling of some distance in there. So I've got some long, medium, and then super short uh, pieces of grass. Now at this point I do need to wash my brush so when I wash it out in the water I want to make sure that I'm getting all the paint out and you're going to see that it clumps together more but it will separate out as it dries. So that's all I need that brush for. Um, now I'm ready to do just a little bit of spattering and I'm going to use the spatter tool for that. Um, this is dry also this has no water on it but I'm going to dip it directly in the well I'm going to dip it directly in the well that I'm going to be using. I'm using the burnt sienna, which is the lighter brown. And I don't need a lot. So I've got some on there that I'm going to be using right on the paper. And I need to slide the metal post up into the spool, or the metal post that's on the spool up into the brush. Now, if you remember how to use this, you don't want to hold it up in the air because it's going to spray everything. You want to make sure you hold it as close to the paper as you can without... Um, touching the paper and you're going to turn nice and slow and I'm going to go right along this bottom edge here and I just want to move my brush around as I as I do a little bit of spattering just to create some texture there you can especially see it right in here it looks really nice um, and you can use the spatter technique um, to create just that nice little bit of little bit of texture spray um, once you're finished with that this can get dipped right into the water bowl and rinsed out and it gets returned to the tool bins that are by your uh, sink area. And then lastly, I need my liner brush, which fell under the table, so now I've got that. And again, remember, even though this is kind of fuzzy looking, when you uh, put it in water, it will go to a nice firm point. And I'm going to be using just the um, burnt umber with it. So you want to kind of I'm going to show you how I apply the paint to the liner. I sort of turn and roll the brush into the paint so that it stay, the paint stays on the tip, um, but it also um, really kind of coats all sides so that I could, if I need to turn the brush as I paint, I can. So in the foreground, I want to create just some nice thin grasses, um, like a Timothy bloom. I don't know if you've ever looked at grasses in a field, but you'll have some that are have like a little bit of a tassel on top. So we're going to create just a little bit of a tassel, painting the sides of the blade. I'll put a few more in. I would say create at least, I would say, oh, like five of these, three to five. Um, try to get some, you know, side pieces on, on your grasses. We'll get just a couple more here. And again, don't evenly space them. Make sure that you've got some um, space between them that's varied. Another tassel top. Another one over here. 
just to kind of give a variety, because I do want you to experiment with um, how to create a landscape. We're going to be doing landscape paintings. So you might decide, you know, at some point that you want to have uh, some grasses in yours and you want to give a variety to the field that you're working in. And so you want to make sure that you have some techniques under your belt for doing such a thing. So that's why we're using these techniques as sort of practice for our for our paintings. So there, there's five unevenly spaced. Again, this is not a mode field, so we don't want it to look like somebody planted them there. Um, and that wraps that one up. So in this one we did the wet on wet with the field. We allowed the wet on wet to pull that area down from the tree line. We used a uh, side of the brush application to get the tree line scratching in with the handle. We tried to use some sprinkle of salt. We've used the fan brush, the liner brush, uh, and the spatter tool. 